No, it's not a hand puppet, okay? What's the matter with you, Stacy? Whoa, hello, 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 hello. Okay. And the show gets crazy. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Have you ever had times in your career where you felt discouraged? Oh, sure. Um, how did you handle it? How did you write it out? Or did you say, the roller coaster's too up and down? Oh, no. I, I couldn't not perform. I mean, that's here's the thing. If you have a passion for something, yeah. a true passion, mm. then I believe that's your obligation to pursue that passion. The times that I have been discouraged, I pray. And what I pray for is guidance. Mm -hmm. um, I believe ultimately that we are supposed to be of service in this world. Um, and, you know, <laughs> I would have never dreamed that I would have a career like this because it never entered my mind to do voiceover. Right. Mm. You know, I couldn't get arrested as an actor. Did you always want to perform? Was that something oh, you yeah. always wanted to do? Uh, here's like, when, do you remember when you became aware, like, this is... <laughs> Exactly. This is my, yeah. I went to, I was married uh, to my first husband, who uh, we met at uh, Central Missouri State, mm -hmm. and I was going to become an English professor. <laughs> but a terrible one. Professor Marshall, <laughs> and, we'll see you and, now. Uh, and, uh, you know, <laughs> there would be a play, and he, uh, I would say, oh, maybe I should try out for it. And he finally said, why don't you get off your butt and do it? And, uh, and so I did, and then I realized... I've been lying to myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I grew up with a few issues. I had a weight problem all my life. Uh, and while some people that would not stop them, that, you know, that impacted my life in yeah. a lot of ways. Um, so there were a lot of things I didn't have confidence in. And even in Dawes's class, I always felt like I was the last one to, to work. Mm -hmm. You know, and then finally when I did work, it, it kind of never stopped. But, you know, everybody else was going out and they had an agent and they had this and they had that. And it was like, I'm just going to keep trying here. We're going to keep trying. Like yeah. the You were the closer, the Mona. You're Ooh. like, I, I'll bring it in. And then the relay, she's like, I got it. I got it. I'm the anchor. Exactly. Work, work, work. I'll bring it home. Well, I don't know about that. You know, you're talking about people like Nancy Cartwright and yeah. Bob Bergen. So the know. alumni list is amazing. Oh, it yeah. is. We're going to be doing a tribute to Dawes that... Um, uh, Diane Michelle put together, and we each get to talk about the impact that he had mm -hmm. on our lives. He wrote me a monologue about called Majesty about the head of a, an ad agency. It was very controlling. I don't know why he could have possibly thought that would work for me. But <laughs> I used that as an audition uh, to get into the L.A. Moving Van and Puppet Company. Now, here's an interesting story that you can only look back and see. You know, a lot of the work I do is sync. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? That means I have to match mouths. Mm -hmm. I knew nothing about hand puppets. I didn't know that the LA Moving Van and Puppet Company was that. The um, city of Los Angeles was putting together five theater companies that would be paid by the city under um, a government grant to go into the schools and rec centers and do multicultural bilingual shows. So you needed to do a song. I used one of the songs I wrote. Mm -hmm. And you needed a monologue. And Dawes <clears> said, use Majesty. Mm -hmm. It'd be perfect. So I got into that company. I toured with that company for 10 years. That director felt it was easier to teach someone how to work a puppet than it would be to take a puppeteer and teach them how to act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was dead on. And I didn't realize that connection until one day I was <laughs> doing some film and we were trying to get the mouth to match, and I realized my hand was doing ah. this. And I thought, oh, my God. I mean, part of it is, part yeah. of it is being a musician, but mm -hmm. part of it is the that's what you're doing. Yeah. 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 Wow. It's connected. So yes. you look back and you see all these things that happened in your life that got mm -hmm. you here. Mm -hmm. It dawned on me, too, that if I had not been a good wife to my first husband, I would not have met my second. Mm. Wow. And that one's going There's really well. There's another t-shirt right there. What do, you, what, what do I mean by that, you might Mona, What do you mean by that, Mona? My first husband had difficulties finding and keeping a job, and our marriage was ending. And God bless him, I think he may have been bipolar, I don't know. 
but he would, you know, he would be all enthusiastic and then he would drop it. And during one of those enthusiastic jags, he got involved with a company that can be very good, which is Amway. Yeah. Mm. But it's only as good as what you put into it, mm -hmm. which is yeah. true of all life. Yeah. So one more time he got involved and then uh, he brought me in and being a good wife, I was, you know, oh, okay, we'll talk to other people about it. And we were building yeah. a little business and then he dropped it. Now, mind you, I was touring. I was doing a, a one woman show at night. I had, an, <laughs> I had no more time to do this in the man and the moon. Right. But my sister-in-law was coming in town. She needed a, a business that wouldn't take a lot of money to start up. So I took her to a meeting. Now I had already made up my mind. I had talked to the woman who's been like a mom to me since mine died at 14. And I said, I think it's time that Dennis and I separate. And she said, well, why don't you wait till your sister-in-law leaves town? And at that meeting, well, let me backtrack. As a performer, mm -hmm. you know this, mm -hmm. especially on stage, you, a lot of people are attracted to you, okay? And certainly I had opportunities, but I believe in the sanctity of marriage and I mm -hmm. never went for that. At that meeting, <laughs> Sal was at that meeting. <laughs> and... Uh -oh. Something went through me and I thought, okay. Super Sal was I, there. I, <laughs> this is going to sound really weird, but Super yes. Sal was there. I, as it, I loved his face. I wanted to just touch his oh. face. And usually I was attracted to men by their intellect. And not that he's not smart, but uh, <laughs> there was a sexual feeling there that I had not felt for a long time. So I went home and I said to Dennis, I think it's time we separated. And he said, Okay. Okay. So, that you know, went what, well. Okay. Yeah, that went easy. I said, you need to move out. And he said, why? And I said, because I'm paying the rent. And so, <laughs> God bless him. He, you know, he left and moved in with another woman within three weeks after that. So Resilient, wow. Dennis. But okay. once again, the irony is yep. I wanted to support my first husband yeah. and help him find himself. Yeah. And because and of that, you were rewarded. And, and yes, I was. You were you were rewarded. And how long have you been looking at Sal's face, <laughs> Mona? Dude, we're not going to get into that. This is a family show. 1986. Wow. And he is the inspiration for Adventures of Puss and Dick: A Survivor's Guide to Relationships. Well, that's beautiful. Congratulations. That is <laughs> quite an accomplishment. Yeah, that is a really neat that's story. Yes, we still love each other. And I yes, there is sex that. after a certain age. What? It's crazy. You heard right? it here, YouTube. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mona, how did, how and when did you discover that you could actually do both female That's and great male segue, Chuck. voices? Because since we're talking about men, there's sex after a certain age, and now you're going to be a hermaphrodite. I'm you right I, dis now. <laughs> I discovered that. I discovered that. First of all, I'm a tomboy. I think that helps. <laughs> I was uh, in. D. Marcus's improv class yeah. off the wall, and uh, she was having us do children. And shortly before that, I, Brian Cummings had said, well, come guest at my class. And he had had us do commercials yeah. as boys. And I guess my natural placement is, my natural placement is somewhat like a boy's. And then shortly after that, I landed the role of Ag Alexander and uh, Bergman's Fanny and Alexander. Mm. Wow. Which was yeah, mm -hmm. I bet. Because I'm watching it for the first time and I'm thinking, he's about to be seduced by a woman. How am I going to act that? <laughs> <laughs> and then Sal and I were dating when that film came yeah. out. And so he's watching the screen. Did he's Sal looking at give me. you any advice on how to do that, <laughs> Mona? <laughs> Nobody kept looking at me going, I'll be your scene really partner, you? Mona. <laughs> Is that really you? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's oh, so yeah. funny. Oh, I discovered my inner boy, but but also I just realized something. I used to improvise, and I made up a whole family. Margaret Elizabeth, who is four and a half, and she has an older brother yeah. named Mikey. Yeah, okay, they get the point, Margaret Elizabeth, okay? Here's the deal. My father is a conductor, okay? And our mother, she was an opera singer, and she died. And now we are being raised by... Uh, Auntie, and she's really fun, but sometimes she has too much happy juice, and she <laughs> kind of falls over. Oh, no. That's not good. Most of my male and female, <laughs> most of my children came out of those two characters. So you that's how you kind of discover, wow, I could do like whole families, not just, 
you know, yeah. boys and girls. She knocks out the whole family. See, Hence the dozens I mean. and I dozens of roles she plays. Extra. I actually forgot that. Yeah. yeah. And See? Margaret Elizabeth oh. and Mikey have been with me. Yeah. For God. For so good. Many some other years. I love it. What's the next chapter look like for you, Mama? Yeah. <laughs> I want to sell Adventures of Puss and Dick, A Survivor's Got to Relationships yes. as a series. Okay. Yes, so I'm um, working on it. Um, right now it's a webcomic. And yes. so the last episode, the last episode on the web series um, is called Time's Up. So I'm going to take, I've written a two-minute script. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be talking, hopefully, to some of the animators on South Park because they'll be on hiatus and see if I can find an animator. Uh, I need a good photographer because the backgrounds for that are realistic. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I want to produce and to do it. I mean, I, I've written it. I think it's strong in terms of entertainment, but I think it also has a really good message. So besides doing as much voiceover as I possibly can because I love it, yes. <laughs> I want to. I want to see. That Puss was and Dick. good. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what you call bringing words to life. Okay. Yes. And if I only knew what I was going to do first, I would yeah. do it. Okay. Um, and I, I really, you know, I never thought I would like teaching, because I was a very, I'm a very dedicated student, and I like people to understand that you really have to study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You really have to hone your craft. The day you stop doing that, you know, you'll be dead. Uh, in my case, I might do it in the hereafter and haunt all of you. But um, I, I hope my so. point to that is, if you're fortunate enough to have that kind of a calling, yeah. you need to hone it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that begins with acting and improv. Mm -hmm. So, but um, thanks again to Yasmin, my fabulous media consultant, yeah, who Yasmin. I hired because of my project, yes. who's been just a, a godsend. Uh, I've been doing one-on-ones, and I really like it. Because I, I know I can give someone some, I know I can give people tangible things that they can use. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Without no matter yeah. whether they do voiceover yeah. or they just want to communicate better. I mean, somebody yeah. can just hang out with you and just get mm -hmm. a ton of it's stuff. Like, ding, ding, you can just ding. teach people by yeah. hanging out with you. Right. Just say, hey, me, hang out with me and your girl, Laura. <laughs> um, no, but this is really, really great. Mm -hmm. So if somebody were interested, are there pre-qualifications that you would yeah. like them to have before working with you? No, it, I, but I want them to know that this is not about, <laughs> about talking. If they want to talk to me, they can go to um, <clears throat> Unlocked once a week and, you know, ask questions and so right. on and so forth. And I think they're going to start doing that live where I can hear them. Good. And that's free. That's a free app. Yeah. Right. Um, but if they all want I want to coach them, with you. If they want to coach with me, I just want them to be open. Yeah. And ready to work. Yeah. Good. Absolutely. That's really And it's not about funny voices. Yeah. No. Oh my God, please. No, it's not yeah. about funny voices. Yeah. It's about using your voice. Mm -hmm. Think of it as a palette. You know, we're painting pictures. We're painting pictures with our voices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially as a voice actor, even though you both know we use our bodies, yeah. but not like we don't have that luxury that that a stage or a cam on camera actor has. Yeah, everything's got to be in the voice. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. how does somebody contact you if they want to coach with you? MonaMarshall.net. Right There's there. A, you can just easy. go online and, yeah. and it's really easy. You, right. uh, I think it's through um, PayPal, um, and then we set up a time on Zoom, mm -hmm. and Zoom's good. Easy because I, mean, I can yeah. see Zoom you. Right, easy. I can actually yeah. see right. you because that's important, and you can see me because yeah. sometimes I'm showing. Things with my mouth, or I'm yeah. sure this is a your hand puppet. Well, actually, that's the side of your the mouth. Side of your mouth. If you could your mouth hand puppet. Mouth. Got it. Yeah. yeah. So front teeth. It's not a shadow yeah. puppet. Got it. No. <laughs> no, it's not a hand puppet. Okay. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Stacy? <laughs> Whoa! Hello! 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 Okay. <laughs> And the show gets crazy. You can also follow <laughs> Mona on Twitter at the Mona Marshall and Instagram <laughs> Mona Marshall Voices. If you were, if I were a rich man, what? Hey, da, 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 da. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> sunrise, sunset, oh my gosh. sunrise, sunset. The two woman yeah. fiddler. There I would go. see that. I would see it. We could like alternate. I would do it. <laughs> Oh my God, oh I my love you God. so hard. Okay. <laughs> if you were starting your career over, not from a place of regret, yes. but like if you were starting your career over today, 
what do you think it would take to be a voice actor in Today? today's world? You know, people approach life in general, either from within or from without. Mm -hmm. If you ask that question of a lot of people, they would say, well, you, you do this, 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 and this. For me, I would say, you find your passion. If voiceover is what you love, really understand that it's not about being able to copy a voice, right. that it really is about coming from these characters from within. I don't think I would do anything differently. I, I've, I've never been one that schmoozed people up. Um, if I like you, I genuinely like you. Um, we do this little party at the end of the year between Christmas and New Year's on a Saturday because people have finished shopping and we cook ourselves. It's, we cook all the stuff ourselves, my husband and I. And we invite people, some in our business, some not, but they're people who I have a real rapport with. Mm -hmm. um, and we love mixing them all together because they're not all in the business. Um, and that's kind of been how my career is. I, I, it's never felt good for me to just do something to further my career. Mm -hmm. So I try to come from within and I try and be as honest as I can, <clears throat> pardon me, about what I'm doing. So I guess that's all, you know, I would say, I love the fact that I studied English and literature because words are important. Yeah. Um, I love old radio shows. I still listen to them. Mm -hmm. And I listen to old movies because back in the day, you had very distinct characters. And mm -hmm. that was something I learned from Dawes. So, oh, a lot of my characters have been based on Marjorie Maine, for instance. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know who that is, look at an old movie or Mon Paul Kettle, because I grew up with them when they started to go on TV. But she's given me a chance to do all kinds of things, you know, because once again, you take an idea, yeah. mm -hmm. you start with that, but I'm inhabiting her. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not, it's like an acting. You can put on an overcoat and you get the feeling of what it's like to be in an overcoat. Even better than that, once you have the overcoat, and this is kind of how South Park works, is then you got to go back in and you got to find out who that person in the overcoat is, which is exactly what I'm doing when I'm listening to Trey do Mrs. Blaflowski mm -hmm. or Butter's mom, but mostly Kyle's mom. Right. There was an instance uh, doing South Park years ago. It was the one about boobs, uh, Bebe and, and boobs. And I was doing Bebe's mom. And I was listening to Trey do those reads and I thought, wow. He must have a sister. He must, you know, because it was such a female read. Mm -hmm. Not the placement of his voice, but the intention. The sensibility. And so I asked him, this is before he was married, before he had cho uh, his child. Um, I said, do you have a sister? He said, no. That to me came out of almost like he was channeling that. Mm -hmm. He was so into the writing. And because he was into that writing, and he recorded it that way, I was there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It goes back to exactly what I'm trying to do with those sculptures. Yeah, This is a part of the best of the essence of me, creating something that can be passed on and that you can have. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same thing with acting. It really comes down to authenticity, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's only honest? one you. There's only one you, mm -hmm. and but there's many ways to do the characters that you're creating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, what you bring to something, and your ability to take direction. That's the other thing. You have to be open. And I think one of the most difficult things for, for anybody in any business, as you get older and you're dealing with younger people who are in charge, you have to be open to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not, once again, you're closed off. Your creativity shuts down. Yeah. And I find that I really enjoy working with younger people. They bring something into the game that I don't have. I didn't grow up with games. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up with a cell phone. I sure as heck didn't grow up with a computer. Yeah. Right. But I need to be in touch with that, you know, to keep creating, keep that flow going. Yeah. I think those creative juices are like flowing <laughs> like Thanksgiving, okay? <laughs> Here is a mystery question, Mona. Oh my God. Oh. Pick a card, any card. Yeah, go it. And Chuck is going to say, will you please? What? Like, read the card. Oh, read it well, as, that would require uh, as Cartman's mom. I can't read it as Cartman's mom. Why not? Kyle's mom. I'm Kyle's sorry, mom. Kyle's mom. Because I don't do her. That's <laughs> April. <laughs> that would be that April was a good Stewart. answer, though. April Stewart. Very good. <laughs> April, she, 
<laughs> Very good. Which writer from the past, present, or future would you like to get a personal letter from? Ooh. That's a good question for you. That wow. is. One of my favorite poems is the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock, and that's T.S. Eliot. Mm. But then I, then I learned more about his personal life, and I'm a hot mess. <laughs> so I'm not so sure. One of my favorite books is To Kill a Mockingbird. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's great. So, and if I could actually remember her name. No. Oh, Harper Lee. Harper Lee. Yeah. I think that's a person I would really like mm. to sit down and talk to. Wow. And the reason, <laughs> so sorry I couldn't remember her name. Uh, I bet I did know it somewhere. Um, that book has always been very inspirational to me. And oddly enough, it, it wasn't so much that her father did that. Mm -hmm. It was the relationship she had with her father. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't so have timeless. that. so yeah, timeless. Yeah. And I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And so every time I watched the movie and then when I read the book and I saw that relationship, oh, yeah. there was that feeling of wanting to be that child. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that she was a tomboy. Mm -hmm. So I identified with the child. Yeah. And oddly enough, I can remember that Kim Hunter did the narration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Who was just a spectacular actress. Um, but yeah, I think I would like to sit down there. I love that. I love That's that. That's really cool. Well, that is a classic, and you are a classic, darling Mona Marshall. Darling what a joy. What a joy. You. Absolutely. You it's been a joy for me, too. This is no kidding, but you are like a very, very busy person. So the fact yeah. that you would take time off your schedule and come here and share with us and them and everybody is so cool. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Without <clears throat> them and without you, I wouldn't be working. Well, so thank you all. She's gracious after all. I think that <laughs> we will be hearing from you for a very long time. Oh, thank yeah. you, ma'am. Oh, I yeah. love Thank it. You, sir. you are always welcome here, Mona. Thank you. And we love you. Dick, here we come. <laughs> Woo! Well, that concludes our two-part episode with the awesome Mona Marshall. Yes. Mona, thank you so much. So You're amazing. Welcome. My goodness gracious. We're going to be back next week with a whole brand new VO Buzz Weekly for you, so stick around. Yes, we will. And make sure to follow all of us on social and subscribe to all of us on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. And just remember. Do you always have time for a little buzz, okay? Okay. Hi, I'm Mona Marshall, and I just got buzzed by Chuck and Stacy. What a ride. <laughs> come on, come on, come on and get buzzed with us. The Old Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosbitrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz. <laughs>